Ironically, supporting evidence for seafloor spreading would be found on land, the site of an ancient volcanic eruption. Here in the Owens Valley of California, scientists probing one mystery would serendipitously provide a way to measure the growth of the ocean floors. When lava cools, it acts like a compass, freezing in the direction of magnetic north. But in several locations around the world, frozen compasses were discovered that pointed south. What did it mean? Do rocks somehow reverse their magnetism? Or more fantastically, can the Earth's magnetic field change direction? Since 1956, Alan Cox of Stanford University and Brent Dalrymple of the U.S. Geological Survey have explored this magnetic reversal mystery. Our idea was to collect rock samples from all over the world. We would look at their mineral content, the direction in which they were magnetized, and their ages, and compare these. If rocks were magnetized to the south because they contained peculiar minerals, then all rocks magnetized to the south contain those peculiar minerals. On the other hand, if the wild theory that the magnetic field had flipped was correct, we'd find that rocks from all over the world recorded this flip at exactly the same time. Yeah, I'll see what I can find here. For accurate testing, the scientists must find lava undisturbed since the eruption. The reversal hypothesis was an exciting one to me because it involved uh, the entire Earth. It was a global phenomenon. And uh, somehow I thought it was just marvelous that the Earth's magnetic field uh, might have reversed itself. There was no proof of that, it was just a hunch. A diamond drill is used to obtain cores of lava. Back in the laboratory, they are dated and carefully measured to determine whether they are magnetized to the north or south. Good, thanks, Brent. I'll shoot that. Uh, Before the core is removed, Cox takes a line. careful note of its orientation by using a compass to sight on a known landmark in the nearby Sierra Nevada mountains. Azimuth. Such precision is necessary to later accurately determine the lava's magnetic direction. Y-axis is... 281. This looks like a pretty good place to set up the flexcape, right? The frozen lava compasses here at Big Pine, California, reveal that the Earth's magnetic field did actually flip to the south almost a million years ago. What causes the magnetic field generated in the Earth's fluid dynamic core to reverse is yet another mystery. In the years following, the scientists from California and their colleagues would drill and date hundreds of lava samples from around the globe. They would find that rocks of the same age, whether from Alaska or Africa, simultaneously record the same magnetic orientation. This led to the construction of a time scale of magnetic reversals that plotted these flips. By 1966, Cox's group would confirm nine north-south flips in some four million years. The discovery was like finding the Rosetta Stone. By cracking its hieroglyphic code, archaeologists unlocked thousands of years of Egyptian history and culture. The geologists who helped solve the mystery of magnetic reversals would not be aware that their reversal code would also unlock a rich and dynamic Earth history. For a decade, research vessels had been towing magnetometers across the oceans. Here, over the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the readings revealed strange and mysterious magnetic patterns. But no one knew what they meant. The key to deciphering these curious patterns would come from another team of scientists at England's historic Cambridge University. People often assume that well, we sort of had the idea in the bath or while shaving. Well, not collectively, but one <laughs> of us had the idea in the bath or while shaving us. Frederick Vine, a young student, would team with Drummond Matthews to analyze a detailed magnetic survey Matthews made in the Indian Ocean. 
made in, what, 62? Which we, I brought back from sea in 62, yes. Yeah. Which you brought back, yeah, just a few months after I started yeah. as a graduate student and basically gave me the job of interpreting that. Most thought the pattern was due to magnetic and non-magnetic bands of rock on the sea floor, but Vine and Matthews studied the data carefully and reached their own startling conclusion. Could the stripes of the pattern be a record, frozen into new ocean crust at times when the Earth's magnetic field was pointing alternately to the south, then to the north? At mid-ocean ridges, hot rock surges upward, cools, and is slowly carried away as if riding a giant conveyor belt. Vine and Matthews theorize that newly created sea floor, like volcanoes on land, records the direction of the prevailing magnetic field and leaves a matching pattern on each side of the ridge. The remarkable match of the magnetic patterns on the sea floor, stripe for stripe, with the magnetic time scale developed on land, establish the concept of seafloor spreading and also the rate at which the plates are moving apart. If Cox and Dalrymple had discovered the geologic Rosetta Stone, Vine and Matthews learned how to read it. Yeah, that was really that was really 1968, a specially equipped research vessel, the Glomar Challenger, is dispatched to the South Atlantic. It drills sample cores on either side of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Analysis of rock and marine fossils brought to the surface shows that the sea floor grows progressively older the farther it is away from the ridge. Glomar's drilling would provide the first direct confirmation of sea floor spreading, nearly an inch a year. Geopoetry had seemingly become geofact. 400 miles southwest of the Azores, scientists prepare for an extraordinary adventure. The French submersibles, Siena and Archimed, with America's Alvin, will give scientists a first-hand look at a site of sea floor spreading. Dubbed Project Famous, the expedition into the deep began four years after man landed on the moon. Alvin sinks for two miles into a rift valley the size of the Grand Canyon. Scientists film seafloor cracks, evidence that the plates are pulling apart. Distinctive formations called pillows demonstrate that volcanic eruptions from below create new seafloor, similar to this pillow lava forming off the coast of Hawaii. The fires of creation burn under the sea. As this new lava and the rocks beneath it cool, they thicken to some 60 miles, forming the outer shell of the globe, called the lithosphere. Numerous shallow earthquakes are recorded along these mid-ocean ridges, still deeper ones at edges of some continents and under high mountains like the Andes and the Himalayas. These earthquakes reveal the lithosphere is fractured like a giant eggshell into some 20 huge slabs or plates. Here, the African plate, the Indian-Australia plate, the Pacific plate. This lava lake is analogous to how these plates float on a partially molten layer beneath the lithosphere. The continents don't plow through hard ocean floor, as Wegener's critics claimed, but ride like passengers embedded in these floating rafts. As they jostle for position, the plates interact in four ways. Some spread apart at mid-ocean ridges. Some grind past each other. Those carrying continents collide. Some slide beneath each other. This ceaseless movement builds the Earth's surface. For those who live on plate edges, the results can be devastating. 